All right guys, it is March 1st and I'm out here for my first frost seeding project of the spring. But before I get into that, this is also the spot, this tree here, where I killed my buck this late season on the last day of the season. So I figured while I'm here, I'd talk about the spot, how it breaks down and, and what I learned from hunting it so many times. The first thing is the access. Uh, if you look here, there's this big ditch that runs east-west and it intersects with this ditch that runs north-south. And this is actually something that I kind of got wrong. Uh, I mentioned before, but this is this past fall slash winter was my first time hunting this piece. So it's a good example of how time in the tree is still the ultimate teacher. You know, you can look at maps, you can make guesses, you can get input from other people. But there are certain things that you just have to learn by watching how the deer use a certain property and the way they move. I initially thought most of the movement, general movement on this property would be from this area where there's more cover out this way where there's more destination ag fields and things like that. So that's how, that's why I initially set this spot up with the stand right here. What I learned, however, and keep in mind, I really only hunted it the late season. I never hunted it earlier to know. I wouldn't be surprised if there was a little more of that movement earlier on. But late season, most of the movement was the exact opposite. The deer were bedded over in this area and they worked their way this way into the plot. So this area in front of the stand was the last area they got to. And my best guess or my assumption on that, and maybe I should have figured this out earlier, but most of those trees where the deer came from you got a younger grove of trees a lot of cottonwoods so the and I'll, I'll walk over there later but the the understory is very grassy a lot more ground cover um, just a better bedding spot especially later in the year where the deer wanting that that sunlight hitting them when it's really cold you know this property is so flat so you don't have like the southern facing aspects but the sunlight clearly is getting through to the ground level in that spot whereas if you look over here while there's a bigger section of timber it's a very open understory uh, closed canopy forest that could definitely use some work but um, just nothing very very bare on the bottom uh, just a less likely spot for a deer to be bedded especially late in the season they want they prefer that open canopy so that's why a lot of that movement was this direction um, even though there's a lot more cover that way um, almost every night the deer i'd say 10 percent at the most came from that direction 90 percent of the deer came from this way and as you can see every encounter i had with that buck i killed you know it took him he worked through it's almost a series of three little plots and i'll talk about that a little bit more later but it took him a while to get to this spot so back to the access and like I said, how I kind of got that wrong. I initially set this up to where this big ditch that runs east and west here, I would drop down way at that end of it and walk it all the way down here to the tree stand. I did that the first couple times until I started noticing the deer coming from that direction as well. And I was afraid I was messing messing that up a little bit whether the deer could see me coming down the hill or if potentially some of my scent was getting up out of the ditch close to where they're bedded so i eventually adjusted it to where instead of walking that whole way i came a different direction from where i parked and got in this ditch um this this doesn't run as far but i'd walk across open ground but it was a long ways away from where those deer were bedding. And then I would drop down into the ditch as I got closer, come down to this intersection and then pop right up in the tree. And I felt like I had a lot more productive hunts when I did that. I saw more deer, saw better deer, etc. So I eventually started doing that uh, basically for every hunt the last six days. Um, and I obviously had some, some good hunts and who knows, maybe it's coincidence, but I just felt like adjusting that uh, made it more bulletproof access, a lot cleaner access, and I wasn't walking past the deer that I was hunting. Um, the other thing too, with this ditch, I, I talked about how I had 
a stand on both sides. I ended up hanging a, a stand on the other side for the, the opposite wind. When I hunted that one, I'd do the same thing, but I'd follow this to the main creek and come around this little peninsula to get in the stand that's on the other side of the plot. So no matter where I was hunting, I was using this ditch system as access and I kind of designed the food plots around that. Um, it was just how I used them that varied just a little bit as I learned the main direction of the deer movement. So this is that area where, like I said, most of the deer came from during this late season. You can see it's real grassy bottom good bedding spots it's thicker more sunlight coming through and you can see this was the main trail that most of these deer came in on. so here's where i would be able to kind of glass and see the deer first come into this little this first little opening like i said it's kind of a series of three small little tiny plots and thankfully a lot of times the deer ended up over in the third one where i was hunting you know deer just naturally just browsers like that they just like to browse and move along browse and yeah, it was the exact same thing same brassica blend planted in all three spots um, but what was what was kind of interesting <clears throat> i did a little experiment part of it was just because i ran out of time one night i was telling it like nine o'clock at night it was getting dark i was trying to get the sea before rain and i only tilled up that one the far one where i um hunted where i had the stands tilled it packed it everything you know did all the necessary steps but these next two all i did was spray and broadcast seeds same exact blend that i planted down there but i did not disturb the soil i didn't till or disc or anything and uh, while that one grew quicker, that, that further one, at the end of it, it was pretty much, you couldn't tell a difference. And I'll show some pictures if I have any. But you really couldn't tell a difference between this spot, the middle spot, or the, the far spot. Um, even though I planted them way differently. So that was kind of a cool little experiment that just kind of happened. Um, but like I said, series of three little small plots. A lot of times the deer just kind of work their way through here. And they'd browse in here a little bit and they almost always work through this gap. These plots all kind of hourglass down, bottleneck down into the next one. So you can see this little gap right here. And then it opens back up again. Obviously I got some chainsaw work to do on this tree that fell in the little plot. The deer kind of do the same thing, browse a little bit in this one. And again, it bottles next down into the, I call it the main plot. It's probably the biggest one, but it's not much bigger. They would hit this scrape. This little branch that I had made fairly often. And then come through this little gap. And this is about where he was standing when I shot him, about just under 30 yards away. Overall, I really like how this plot sets up, this stand sets up. So I'm not gonna change a whole lot other than maybe adjusting the stand height higher or lower to avoid that branch and avoid more self-filming issues out of that tree. But like I said, my plan today is to frost seed this. I'm gonna do a blend of uh, clovers and chicory. And I may, I'm, I'm gonna do that in all three of these little um, little plots, but I may come in later in the summer and to at least one under and plant to a brassica blend. But we'll see, it depends how it does and you know what I do with some of these other spots. But it's just such a cool spot with the access. Obviously that's always such an important aspect of it. And I could see this even being really good early in the season if there's a buck I want to target. So not going to change a whole lot up about this spot other than, you know, have a little more diversity of food uh, planted in here. I'm going to start with uh, walking this, this plot off. I'm going to do all three separate. 
so that I can get the right amount of seed. Uh, but I'm going to map it out so I can get the exact acreage. Alright, so I just used the trace feature to walk around these plots and get them measured. I've got 0.2 on the far end, 0.15 acres on the middle one, and then half an acre here on this main one. So all in total, still less than an acre, yet still a very productive spot, obviously. So I'm going to get this seeded. And one thing real quick on the seed too, for those of you that are interested anyways, uh, obviously I love food plotting. I love experimenting and that's kind of what I've been doing the last few years and working with a buddy to come up with some, some different blends that we think uh, make a lot of sense and they've done really, really well for me. So I'm in the process of finalizing packaging and fulfillment and all that type of stuff to have all of these blends available to purchase so i'm very excited about that if you're interested you can reach out or i can provide more info here when everything's ready to go um, like i said earlier this is going to be a mix of clovers and a chicory and uh, i'm going to get everything measured up get it calculated put it in the hopper and get to work All right, I got all three plots seeded. Um, what I'll usually do, especially with smaller seed like that and somewhat irregular shaped plots, I'll put the, the feed rate on the seeder, uh, very small, a small opening, and I'll hit the perimeter of the plot, walk the perimeter of the plot, and then I'll walk it one direction in rows about as wide as what the seeder throws the seed. And then I'll do the same thing, only perpendicular. Same exact pass, but perpendicular, so the other way. It just results in less missed spots, better coverage. A little more walking, obviously, but better results. So I'm excited. I love this time of year, projects like this. I love getting seed on the ground. Uh, as long as the weather cooperates, this should be a really good food source come later this summer. <laughs> 